The Fablemans. This is a personal project for Steven Spielberg. Quite literally, the story is semi-autobiographical. Everything is more or less based on the actual events. Spielberg's family is the prototype. So it is not The Fablemans, it is Spielberg's, a fictionalized version. Presumably Spielberg uh, had the idea for this film for decades, but moved into production only when both of his parents passed away, because a significant part of the movie is dealing with problems within the family and eventual collapse of marriage. The rest is about a passion of young Steven for filmmaking, uh, which resulted in one of the most successful careers in the industry. So on one hand we have this Family problems, and on the other, there's what is called the coming of age story. And when you hear the words coming of age, that usually means uh, you're about to spend two extremely boring hours watching kids doing uninteresting stuff. Nobody questions Spielberg's uh, skills as a filmmaker, and everybody knows that he is quite good at coming of age stories. And indeed, he puts a lot of work into transforming his childhood experiences into something that is not entirely boring, but only 50% boring. The plot goes like this. The so-called Pebblemans, uh, who stand for Spielbergs again, live in the 50s in America. And the first thing you notice, at least if you're not American, is that the post-war United States is an interesting place. While two-thirds of Europe is devastated, the United States is a super-rich country where children from middle-class families receive film cameras as holiday gifts. Jan Spielberg receives one, starts shooting stuff, eventually becomes better and better at this, etc. Spielberg's father is an electrical engineer, they have a big house and, you know, food. Then uh, his father gets a new, even better job, and they all move to Phoenix, which is a city named after the mythological bird, or a character from the Iliad. In Phoenix, uh, they have an even bigger house and even more food. This is a happy family, they go camping every now and then, they sit around the fire and sing folk songs in broken Russian. Steven is shooting everything on his camera, and this is when he notices that not everything is perfect and his parents' marriage is in fact in trouble. At some point, they are visited by his mom's uncle Boris, and this is an important episode. Because Judd Hirsch, who played the character of Boris, is nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars. And that's weird since he spent like five minutes on the screen. Some reviewers say that the dialogue about art between Uncle Boris and Jan Steven is incredibly important and hits hard everyone who's involved in, you know, art of some kind. Since I'm somewhat an artist myself, and I've been doing something art-related for the most of my life, I'd probably uh, disagree. But yes, uh, this idea that quote-unquote art is more important for the artist uh, than even his family uh, seems to be very dear to Spielberg. Eventually, the family moves again, this time to California. They don't like their new house, though, and young Stephen encounters some anti-Semitism at his new school. For example, local imbeciles demand him to apologize for the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Jan Steven bravely refuses on the grounds that he never lived in the time of Jesus and never killed him, not even once. Which is admirable and makes a lot of sense. Although Spielberg is probably unaware of the current trend. I noticed that in modern America you have to constantly apologize to people with dark skin pigmentation for the transgressions of some other people in the past. Sometimes even people you are not related to in any way. So if we apply this logic to Mr. Spielberg's situation, then he probably should have apologized for some ancient people who supposedly killed a mythological demigod instead of being insensitive. I mean, it's a comparable concept. Eventually the film ends when young Spielberg meets old David Lynch, which produces one of the funniest movie endings we've seen all year. Honestly, seven Oscar nominations is a bit too much for the Fablemans, but it is indeed a good film and it progressively becomes more and more interesting. Although, yes, as mentioned before, a significant part of the movie is quite boring. All of this is very important to Spielberg and for him it is obviously one of the best stories in the world, for personal reasons. But for everybody else it is just mildly interesting. Which explains a little bit why 
The Fablemans uh, show quite disappointing results at the box office, despite being a Steven Spielberg's movie. So what have we learned from the Fablemans? Post-war America was a very rich country. Never apologize for killing Jesus. Christian girls are weird. Art is more important than your family. David Lynch is the greatest director of his generation. In the end, the Fablemans are actually better than half of the movies in the Best Picture category at the Oscars. Well, because they like to nominate garbage these days. It is a personal story of a famous director, and it is worth your attention.